Uh, my name is Eugene Patklevnev. Uh, I'm a doctor of technology uh, of Finland. I'm also a doctor of technical science of Russia. And I used to be a professor of chemistry at one of the universities in Moscow. Uh, during last uh, 12 years, I was making my research work in uh, a rather unusual field, which is called experimental gravity research. And I got some uh, unusual results, which might be extremely interesting for practical application and for the understanding of the mechanism of gravity, which uh, still uh, can be considered as a white spot in modern physics. It said that 1992 is when you first started this experiment or prior to that, so can you, can you, can you elaborate how you started this? I was working at uh, Tampere University of Technology and in fact I was working with uh, high temperature superconductors which are very interesting materials because they can capture the magnetic field of various configurations and they have uh, pretty unusual properties. At that time it was uh, in the center of the attention of all the scientists of the world and I was working with rather big samples uh, with a diameter of maybe uh, six to eight inches, which was unusual even at that time. And I noticed uh, some uh, anomalous behavior of those superconductors. And I noticed that uh, several objects or any objects uh, which were placed over the superconducting disk under uh, the uh, interaction with uh, mag the magnetic fields of high frequency, all those objects uh, lost some part of their weight. Uh, we checked and rechecked our experiments before we were brave enough uh, to publish our first article, and it appeared in 1992 uh, in the magazine of Physica C. And uh, it was uh, met uh, with great interest by the scientific community. And at that time, uh, we used the term mm, gravity shielding uh, because we thought it might be connected really to gravity shielding. But later, we uh, decided not to use that term because it was not right. Now, we use the term uh, gravity modification, or to be exact, it's the modification of local gravity field. And uh, though, to be honest, we do not know exactly the mechanism of gravity, we are only beginning to understand it, still we are already able to use it in different um, aspects and uh, for different purposes, for scientific, industrial and others. Uh, and we think that uh, this direction has a big future. It says that uh, it was it was kind of an accident. You were spinning a disc and some smoke. Is, is that true? Was it an accident? Or okay, uh, you can say it was uh, practically by accident because we were making our research and we were making the measurements of the weight, and we were using a cryostat, and uh, we were working late in the evening. So one of my colleagues came to the laboratory and he was smoking his pipe, and he blew. Uh, the smoke over the cryostat and then a strange thing happened because that smoke approached the cryostat, hit some uh, invisible barrier and then went straight upward. It was a bit unusual but that gave us a very good idea and later uh, we used a barometer in order to uh, check up um, the air pressure over the cryostat and it happened uh, so that uh, the air pressure in the projection area of the disk was uh, lower uh, than in the surrounding atmosphere and the difference was up to several millimeters of uh, uh, water or even mercury so uh, this difference could be felt uh, not uh, only inside our laboratory, but on the second floor above ours. And we were able uh, to show that we really deal with a well 
reproducible and very um, effective phenomenon. So the disc is made of uh, yttrium barium copper ceramics and it has two layers that is very important from uh, the scientific point of view. So when we put the disc over the magnets and we um, cool it down to the temperature of liquid nitrogen or liquid helium, because of the Meissner effect disc is levitating over the magnets and it can be rotated. And again with the magnetic field it can be rotated with big speed. Uh, we use the rotation up to 5,000 uh, rotations per minute, but later we made a special installation which allowed us uh, to use much uh, higher speeds. And uh, every uh, object that is put over the disk loses some part of its weight. In the stationary mode, uh, the loss is not big, it's about uh, uh, point, uh, one uh, percent but uh, when we rotate uh, the disk and use uh, resonance frequencies of the electromagnetic field we can increase uh, the weight loss up to two percent and if we increase also the rotation speed we can uh, reach the maximum values of five percent and at some peak values up to nine percent uh, the only thing that keeps us from better result is the rotation speed because the disc is a ceramic one and uh, even at uh, 20,000 rotations per minute we have uh, very big forces which tend to destroy it so we should keep it always in mind but as I used uh, magnetic uh, suspension system uh, because of the Meissner effect it's possible to rotate it up to uh, rather high speeds. The maximum that we used was about 30,000 uh, and uh, then we had to uh, make some uh, special protection made of uh, plastic materials uh, so that we could strengthen uh, the structure of the disk. In that case we get really good values and uh, also uh, we have some secrets. Uh, they. Um, are connected with the resonance frequencies of the magnetic fields uh, and special configuration of the solenoids. But in general uh, it's a rather mm, simple experiment and it can be reproduced uh, in a normal laboratory at any university. Now the superconducting material, if it's a secret that's fine, uh, but if you're allowed to elaborate on basics uh, of the material? No, it is not secret. Uh, we have uh, two layers. One layer is a uh, normal superconductor, or yttrium barium copper, with a formula 1 to 3. It's uh, well known in the world. And the second layer is practically the same material, but it is not superconducting. It is normal conductor. So, uh, by special heat treatment we can arrange uh, both layers in such a way that one layer is superconducting and another is normal conducting layer. When we rotate uh, uh, the whole disk in the magnetic field, normal conducting layer um, produces a lot of uh, electrons and they move uh, to the superconducting area and they become uh, not electrons but Cooper pairs. And uh, they form what we call in physics uh, Bose-Einstein condensate, which has uh, unusual properties. Uh, and uh, one of the main properties is that it is, it has the property of superfluidity, superconductivity definitely, and it can also interact with subatomic particles that exist uh, around all the objects and uh, practically form the whole universe. Uh, and by using this interaction of uh, our superconducting material with uh, subatomic particles, we get very unusual reaction and we can, to some extent, change or modify local gravity field. If we go to a bit deeper physics, uh, we can say that we have the ability to polarize space 
around this rotating disk and using this uh, polarized uh, space or polarized physical vacuum we can definitely manipulate gravity. I can't say that I'm an expert on gravity. I never was and I'm afraid I never will be. Uh, but I want to understand gravity and to make uh, experimental research in this area because uh, there are a lot of theoretical works and I'm thankful to those theoreticians who uh, also studied our experiments and helped us a lot. But the experimental part still remains, uh, from my point of view, the key point to overcoming gravity and using it for our uh, future, for our purposes, uh, for all our needs. If we speak about the magnetic field, yes, it goes like donuts. But uh, if we speak about uh, the production of gravitons, if they ever exist, because uh, these are still hypothetical particles, we have the emission of uh, gravitons, which go follows the projection of uh, this disk, and it goes to space in one direction, and we can uh, uh, change the direction of uh, the flow of gravitons, or if we are not sure that these particles are gravitons, we can speak about um, uh, gravity waves which propagate in space and again influence all the objects that are in the projection area of the disk. Now, in the disk, is, is, is the weight loss in the center or is it... Run no, no. Uh, we use this configuration because we also have a current which circulates uh, around the disk and it increases the effect. And uh, the increase of the effect uh, is because of the fact that we should uh, uh, create the maximum density of electrons or Cooper pairs inside the superconducting materials. That is the key to success. That's why we are rotating it with great speed, that's why we use high frequency. And uh, uh, the result of uh, this density is when a certain uh, critical density of electrons is reached, we have that interaction uh, of uh, Bose-Einstein condensate with the subatomic particles. If we speak about subatomic particles, what I mean? Uh, well, uh, this is uh, a bit... Well, it's not an unusual question in physics. Usually we deal with vacuum, and vacuum, normal vacuum, is considered to be empty, entirely empty. Still, all the transmissions of electromagnetic waves, which go to space, to space uh, shuttles, to the moon, uh, they propagate in space, and they propagate like waves. And wave is only a distortion of the media. And if vacuum is entire, entire emptiness, there is nothing to disturb, nothing to distort, and then the waves cannot propagate inside it. Also, if we refer to Einstein's theory, he says that gravity is the bending of space-time continuum. It's right, maybe. But if we want to bend something and it is entirely empty, then it is impossible. So we have to admit that there are particles which constitute physical vacuum. These uh, particles are several magnitudes of order smaller than the electron, but they constitute that physical vacuum which has a lot of energy inside and can, uh, to some extent, uh, interact with uh, normal uh, solid bodies.